Hello. Um, Hi there. Um, this is me again. I'm looking increasingly scruffy and haggard. Um, so that's what life is like. Um, although I suppose there's no particular reason I can't shave and brush my hair and stuff, but um, slowly turning into a, a mountain man. Um, nothing much going on today. We spent many hours of it playing Silent Hill 2, he and Jacob, uh, which is very nostalgic for me, and um, it's, it's something we can do together that doesn't require going somewhere that's cancelled. Um, we're at a bit of a frustrating part, so we're, we're on pause. And then I had a uh, review to finish. Uh, which I finished, and if Norman tunes in on this, finished it by deadline. Um, a movie called It Cuts Deep, which is a, a horror comedy. Um, and probably as early as tomorrow, you'll be able to read my review on horrorbuzz.com, which I recommend the website and particularly my work. Read my reviews. Uh, mostly I seem to get the, the oddball and indie stuff. Um, Rarely the the big the big triple uh, A um, studio movies, uh, but that's fine. I like the oddball in indie. Uh, it does mean that I get some real turkeys sometimes, um, but sometimes real fun turkeys. Like uh, shit, what was the name of it? There's this a, a zombie movie whose subtitle was Drag Queens versus Christians versus Zombies. Uh, I mean, how can you go wrong with that, really? Um, it wasn't quite as much fun as I thought it would be, but still. Uh, as, as someone who loves Trailer Park of Terror, um, this is a good gig for me. Um, at the beginning of all this, um, I had plans to do a lot of things daily. Like, I'm going to do this every day. I'm going to paint every day. I'm going to walk every day. I'm going to do a video every day. Um, I'm going to do a movie, a movie review every day. I'm just going to create a backlog um, to keep myself busy. Uh, and I was desperately afraid of empty time. And I've discovered over the course of this week that um, even with as much empty time as there is, uh, I can ask too much of myself. I still need rest. I still need um, to make time for breakdowns. <laughs> um, I, yesterday I went to sleep at five and slept through. Um, so that seems to be kind of what uh, my, when my, my coping falls short, um, sleeping and occasionally crying when I'm alone. Um, just, it's all really overwhelming. Um, hi Eric, I haven't talked to you in a while. Um, and I've been like really upbeat and positive in these videos and I don't want to give the impression that everything is sunshine and rainbows. Uh, I know People do that in order to be uplifting, and that's cool, that's great. But it sometimes leaves people feeling that they are alone because no one else is talking about being depressed or anxious. Um, and I know right now a lot of people are. Uh, there's a difference. Hmm. Being depressed and anxious because you have depression and anxiety isn't quite the same as being depressed and anxious because the world is shit or your world is shit, or things are happening that are shit. Um, like, uh, grief is, is, is hard, and it seems really similar to depression, but it doesn't work with most antidepressants. It doesn't help. You just have to process it. And for most people right now, that's where they're at. And if they've never experienced 
um, depression and anxiety on its own. This perhaps is extra hard. Um, but people are dealing in various ways, some by denial. Um, <laughs> I don't know, who am I to say that's a bad idea? You know, as long as you're not making decisions for the rest of us, denial might be just fine as a coping mechanism. Distraction is absolutely fine as a coping mechanism. Uh, at this point, surviving to the end of this is, is the big game. And uh, that's, that's hard enough without making it harder on yourself by uh, requiring yourself to be positive all the time or requiring yourself to be productive all the time. Yes, it's a great time to learn. It's a great time to pick up hobbies. Uh, it's a great time to uh, do projects. Um, but if you're not doing that, if you're watching Netflix and overeating and um, crying without realizing it, um, if it's getting you through, it's getting you through. And then when all this is over, um, then uh, pick up the pieces. And uh, I think things might be shaken up enough that we'll be rebuilding, which can be a good thing. Because if... Um, if your Lego castle falls apart, you can now build whatever you want with those bricks. That's, a, that's, a, that's an analogy that might be um, stretched a bit thin, but uh, there you have it. Um, so in addition, I've also joined a, a writing group, the Salt Lake City Genre Writers, or the Salt Lake Genre Writers. Um, uh, on the invitation of uh, Bryce, who's not watching. Go ahead, give us the joke, Eric. I'll keep talking until it shows up because I know there's a, a lag and I'm not going to sit there and, and stare at the screen. Um, so, yeah, cope however you can. Um, I know for a lot of people, Bryce, I just talked about you. Thanks for inviting me to join the, the Salt Lake uh, genre writers. Um, a lot of people, their coping mechanism is turning to other people. And I see a lot of us doing that. I'm doing that right now. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. Kermit the Frog's finger. Um, it's kind of funny. That's a terrible joke, Eric. It's terrible. Um... My part of my coping is is uh, talking to other people, doing things like this. I've, I've had meetings and, and conference calls and, and things like that, and I always feel a, a bit better afterwards. Um, and part of it is like this is a microcosm of performing. You know, I'm I'm talking to an audience. It's an audience of six people or so. Um, That is a terrible joke, Eric. Um, and and it, it, it gives me something to do. And it's odd because when I'm not being isolated, my coping tends to be isolating. Um, but I do know that getting out in the world is better for me. And so, um, I had created the habit of doing my writing at the library just so I get out of the house and around people, even if I've never spoke to someone. Of course, the library is closed now. Um, and uh, work is still exists as of now. So a couple days a week, I'm going to go out and, and do some labor, um, which is good. And uh, I'm doing some walking in the parks, which is good. Um, and um, my my snail is a, is an a, a, an amazing emotional support snail. Uh, I I gave you the punchline. Did you not hear? It's Kermit the Frog's finger. It's a, it's kind of an old joke too, but then so are we, right? Um, 
so uh, hello from Maine I miss I miss Maine you guys will be getting mosquitoes soon so I don't miss that but we're getting earthquakes so um, it's it's all a balance isn't it uh, I'm well maybe someday soon airline prices are going down huh if I'm smart I'll book a trip but who knows when that will be a smart thing to do I'm still waiting on my refund for the the cancel trip uh, for the, the conference but that trip isn't technically in the past until tomorrow so i kind of hope that 300 dollars, some portion of it comes back um but i'm ready for it if it doesn't i'd also like my state taxes to come in uh it would just be really handy you know uh, yeah so I, I wanted to share um less upbeat, less crafty, just kind of where I'm at. Um, it, it's rough, um, but I've never been this connected to people uh, online. Um, and Facebook, for the most part, isn't quite the cesspit it sometimes can be. And Twitter is much better than it usually is um, for now. Uh, but I also avoid the corners of the internet where people are fighting. I know what they're fighting about. I know where I stand on it. I don't need to wait in. I am not entirely immune to the somebody's wrong on the internet syndrome, uh, but I'm less driven by it than I once was. And I can sometimes see someone being wrong on the internet and, and just kind of keep scrolling by um, and that's really healthy it's getting drawn into an argument with uh, someone who's not interested in listening is just throwing my energy into a pit I get nothing out of it they get nothing out of it I mean, they might get some uh, enjoyment out of being a troll. People do, I guess. Everyone's got to have a hobby. Ah, so, what are you guys doing? I, I made a, a post on Facebook um, asking people what they could teach in a video. And I would love it if people... Uh, would share with me things that they can teach and and do it. You know, give me a 15 minute video on crocheting. I'll watch it um, I, uh, Give me how to do a card trick uh, Elias has got something planned for, for magicians soon, so um, That might there might be something in that I, I'm not entirely sure it's a little bit hush-hush um, Maybe Fretting you know what Bryce? Fred away. Uh, I, 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 could, I could see you fretting very well, uh, and why not? I, I honestly think silly things, small things, um, are probably at this point more valuable than teaching you French or international diplomacy. Um, I'd rather learn how to swear in sign language. I'd rather, can you alternately fret and hunker? Is that, that might be fun. It's, it's gonna be the new dance. Uh, put it on TikTok, it'll become a thing. Kids, kids these days are into TikTok. Um, but boy is the, the, the leadership of TikTok sleazy. Have you seen kind of the recent leak from them? I would love to see you fret and hunker at the same time, Bryce. Apparently, they've been burying uh, TikToks from 
uh, people who are less attractive. Um, and that's pretty slimy because they, they wanted, they, they feel like, um, Hey, Andrew, uh, they feel like it would draw more people in if mostly attractive people were on the front page. So, um, fat people and disabled people and people they deemed ugly were buried. The more I learn about how TikTok is run, the, the worse it sounds, but it's popular right now. Uh, for now, uh, things on the internet have a short lifespan sometimes. Oh. Just noticed that. What is that? There's a tape mark on my wall. Yeah, uh, so where were we? Yeah, what else? Uh, yeah, take a quest to learn swearing in sign language. Um, learn uh, how to diagram sentences. I bet you could do that, Bryce. Bet you anything. Uh, learn how to darn a sock. My God, nobody knows how to darn socks. If you know how to darn a sock, and yes, there are probably already videos on, on darning socks. Um, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't do one, uh, especially right now, because making the videos is therapeutic for you and watching the videos is therapeutic for other people. If, you know, I, I would love to see people I know making a pie, um, trimming a bonsai, um, talking about how to pick soil out when you're shopping. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing reports of some more aftershocks going. I can't feel them here. Um, but we also get big trucks going by, so I'm probably a little uh, um, calloused. Oh, hi, James. I didn't even see you log in. What could you teach in a video? How about, um, you know, uh, two, of my, two of my videos this week. Uh, I did one on uh, voice, uh, voice control and resonance and playing the mouth harp and, and using one to demonstrate the other. And one uh, that I call Zombie 101, which is the history of zombies coupled with how to act f physically as a zombie. Uh, uh, so what, what, you know, that that's stuff I know. Um, how to, you know, how to pose as an art model. I've done art modeling. It's hard. Um, that could be something you could teach, James, I'm sure. Um, that poster behind me. Ballet dancing dinosaur. Now that guy knew how to take a skill and, and put an interesting spin on it. A, uh, a classically trained ballet dancer. Uh, ballet, not belly, uh, and wearing one of those inflatable dinosaur costumes. That's not actually a photo of him. That's something I cobbled together because I didn't have a photo of him at the time I made that poster um, because he hadn't done the act yet. But I was so taken by the um, by the concept, uh, I definitely wanted it on the poster. That's from Gonzo Rising Two. Um, that's from Silly Slam, which was a uh, a goofy little show we did with puppets in the city. Um, yeah. It's Gonzo 2. That's Gonzo 4. That's the cursed Gonzo. That's from Silent Hill 2. I'm pointing to my screen, not to the camera. That's from Silent Hill 2. That's the Silly Slam. That's from the, the cursed Gonzo. Um... Why is it cursed? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm hesitant to tell the story because um, it tends to leave people looking bad that I'm not actually angry at. Um, I think one or two of you might know the story. Um, maybe I'll write it up into an amusing anecdote. Uh, let's see how much control I have on the camera. That's from Gonzo Rising 3, The Bride of Gonzo Rising. That's Gonzo Rising, uh, 4 was the cursed one. This is 6, Eating Gonzo. That was the Thanksgiving show. 5, 
Curse of Gonzo. That was our, our reaction to the Curse show. And then all the 2020s I've, I've put under a, a single image. And that's Gonzo Rising 1. I'm very proud of that poster design. Uh, silly thing. This is a borrowed camera. Um, I've got my own coming from Amazon. Who might keep giving money, even though Jeff Bezos can go to hell? I don't know. I mostly don't buy books from him. I mostly buy books. Um, I mostly don't buy books, to be honest. Uh, hi, Kevin. How's 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 the man? How's Digger Razor Grave Digger Kevin? How's Kevin? Actually, I care more. Um, yeah, so that's me. I think this is going to be a short one because I'm already running out of steam and I haven't really talked about much. Uh, tomorrow I'm making a plan to go for a long rambling photographing walk in uh, the Salt Lake City Cemetery. Um, <laughs> how much of a lag is that, would you say? I've been wondering. This is a borrowed camera. Oh, wow, that's a long lag. Jeez. Yeah, that, that's that's why I see people respond to things and I'm not sure what they're talking about. Like, what's nice, Stephen? I suspect at the time you posted that, I might have been showing the posters. Yeah. Jake says yes. This right there is Jacob Lewis. That's my fiancé. I love him, and he puts up with me. Uh... I could do how I remove how I review movies. I'm not sure how to do that because I would kind of want to show the text um, because I have sort of a, a, a routine now. Uh, maybe I should get PowerPoint and start doing a PowerPoint show. Uh, but uh, I just said this is a borrowed camera. Just now? Yeah. Holy crap. That is a long lag. Um, so yeah, he, he said that the recording just said, this is a borrowed camera, which was quite a while ago, if you've been watching this long. Um, hey, when you see this and I'll count. It's Stephen just... Um, He's, he's doing it, a, he's timing it, or he has offered to do a timing, but we'll see when it happens. This is like time travel. Um, it's like uh, doing radio with a delay, uh, which I've done. Um, I used to be, did you know, I used to be in the Navy. Here, let's tell a story. I used to be in the Navy in the 90s. Um, just at the tail end of the Gulf War. So that makes me a Gulf War vet. Um, full minute lag, says Stephen, from his end. Uh, and uh, as a journalist at the time, I actually, I, I went in and I, and I wanted to be, I'm going to kind of step backwards a few times in this story. I wanted to be a chaplain's aide, right? Because at the time, I was an evangelical Christian, uh, who had just graduated from Bible school, second in his class, from an evangelical Bible school. And one of the uh, the guys in my church, this, this particular branch of, of evangelical uh, Christians believed in um, the gifts of the Spirit, which is stuff like speaking in tongues and prophecy, right? And so... Um, this, this guy from my church felt that he was having prophetic dreams about me, that I would join the Navy and preach the word to the world like they don't already have people doing that there. But sort of to shut him up, I went to a recruiter. But first I went to the Air Force recruiter because Air Force is well known as cushier. Um, 
but they didn't want me because I didn't lie when they asked if I had ever done drugs. And um, yeah, I had I had my time in college. Uh, so I went to the Navy and the Navy just made me sign something saying I'll never do it again. And I took the, the ASFAB test, the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. Um, and it gave me, I, I got a pretty high score and they more or less said I could do anything I wanted. Um, and journalist was, was kind of the top fit. Um, and they said, we don't need any chaplain's aides, which turned out to be a lie. Um, and, uh, but we can do journalism. And I, I felt a little guilty because that sounded like so much fun and I was trying to do something serious, but journalism it was. Um, and later they kept trying to go me, get me to go to nuke school, um, which is terrible. Like half the people drop out of nuke school and, um, and then they go in as an unrated, which means they do all the shit work for at least a year before they can try to get another, another job uh, in the service. But I, uh, I went to school uh, for journalism. I went to uh, the Defense Information School in uh, Indianapolis. Um, yeah, okay. Um, uh, the Defense Information School in Indianapolis, which happens to be where Adrian Cronauer went to school, which is the, uh, the person Good Morning Vietnam was based on. He was a real guy that uh, uh, Robin Williams played. So I went to that school. Uh, we did print journalism, photojournalism, and broadcast journalism. And broadcast journalism was broken into radio and TV. Uh, so I was, I, th I think I was top broadcaster. I was top, top in one of the two. I think it was top broadcaster. Um, but in, in print and, and photojournalism, I have a tendency to wander off and take pictures of flowers instead of going for the, the serious stories, right? They say, go out and find some news. And I was like, look, there are some baby robins. And I take what I, what I feel like is a good picture, but it, it doesn't belong in, in the, the military news. Um, but in broadcast journalism, uh, I, I got top broadcaster. Uh, and the hardest part, uh, if you've been watching from the beginning, and I don't think anyone has, uh, my, my uh, video where I talked about voice, I talked a little bit about this. The hardest part in broadcast journalism was the voice training where they said, um, you need to learn how to have a resonant voice because I did not at the time. And I said, well, what does that mean? And they said, that's where the, um, the voice resonates. Um, and they, they gave me a little bit of uh, 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 anatomy that, that, you know, we've got the, the sinuses in here and the sounds reverberate uh, like, the, like the body of a guitar reverberates the sound from the, the plucked strings. And if you speak the right way, See John James there. He he definitely reverberates naturally. Um, it re resonates naturally. Um, then you get a resonant voice, which carries better and records better, right? So if you don't like the sound of your voice uh, in a recording, if you learn the resonant voice, you'll actually like it better uh, because it will sound more like the voice in your head. Uh, your your resonance now will start to match the uh, the the resonance in your bone in your skull. Um, so that was very hard, uh, and they taught it very badly, but somehow I learned it anyway. Uh, and, and much later when I was going to a voice teacher for a musical theater, she taught me a better way, which in brief, if you know, the roof of your mouth has a hard part in front and a soft part in back, hard palate, soft palate, imagine the soft palate, which apparently is a muscle. I didn't know flex it like an umbrella opening and that kind of opens all the channels uh and 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 resonates your voice now i don't know what is actually happening but visualizing that absolutely does the trick uh although some of the people i've taught that to gag so <laughs> with caution uh but if you're someone who uh uses uh your voice much i highly recommend uh practicing the resonant voice um, 
and you may decide you like it so much you'll train yourself to use it as your your day-to-day -day voice as well which i have done um, if i'm very tired or very cranky um, i lose it and it's kind of like getting an accent back i get what sounds to me very um, small and yeah, nasal and uh, like that um, so um, hi Matt uh, uh, that was a story though I kind of went round and round broadcast journalism then I went into the fleet and I was aboard a ship called uh, the USS Tarawa, which was named after a battle, it was named after a ship that was named after a battle. And we went out to the Gulf. And um, while we were about that, I had a crisis of faith and uh, kind of left the evangelical church. Matt was my friend at the time. Do you remember? Um, one minute from now when the lag catches up, you'll, you'll be hearing me talk about you, Matt. Um, and uh, actually uh, became uh, heavily involved in, in a neo-pagan community, uh, which sort of still allowed me some of what I had got out of church, the spirituality, but it was much more nature-based, uh, much more about visualization and much more personal, less waiting for other people to do, other entities to do all the work, right? Um, and uh, that was cool, and that actually led me to um, leaving the Navy as a conscientious objector, which in retrospect was A, because I was feeling morally and ethically opposed to killing, and B, my bipolar was hitting me pretty hard at year four. It was a five-year hitch because it took so long to take the training. So if, uh, yeah, I know, I know I don't talk about that because I don't want to have that conversation with the people who think that's a bad thing. So I don't talk about that very often. But that's how I wound up in San Diego. That's uh, how I wound up roommates with Matt, who joined a minute ago with two A's in his name. He had two A's in his name at the time, too. Matt is a... Uh, Holistic Health Practitioner in San Diego. Still in San Diego, right? A minute later, he'll hear that. Um, uh, I have since gone back to Maine. Uh, and then uh, while I was in Maine, it seemed like everyone I knew was dying. My father died. My grandfather died. My um, Tony died, if you, any of you know that story. John James knows. Uh, and then I followed my heart to Utah, which was a terrible, terribly bad choice. Um, but good things came of it. It, it, it really, it was just a terrible thing to do, <laughs> but I was running away from, from all the sadness toward adventure. And the thing about running toward adventure is sometimes you kind of trip and fall on your face. And I did. And it took me a while to, to start to recover from that. And Jacob was here with me. Uh, that was that was our beginning life together was, was kind of a little hard. Um, but things are pretty good now. Uh, well, I mean, except for all this. But that has nothing to do with us. Um, and that's how I got where I am. Um, I, I, I fell in with Rocky Horror people and I fell in with Haunters um, after a while and that kind of became my whole life. Uh, and now my life is broadened, so I'm doing many things. I'm creating my own things as well as joining things. So I'm haunting uh, and, and teaching and I'm um, creating these shows, the Guns Rising shows, which I am immensely proud of. Um, this, this last one, I actually got to pay my performers. Uh, I think it's the third time in the entire run I've been able to pay my performers. Uh, and this was twice in a row, and this was more than the previous time. So th this is progress and growth, immediately hit by uh, a moratorium on all performances. Um, however, the next Gonza Rising in April on Easter Sunday is going to be uh, an online special. 
with uh, pre-recorded acts and live uh, interstitials from the MC, which is me. Uh, I will be plugging the hell out of that as we get a little closer and I figure out the right technology. If anyone has any advice, I'm thinking Twitch is going to be the best way to do two media and switch back and forth. Um, and, and live cast and then um, upload a, a recorded part of that to YouTube. Now you can live cast on YouTube, but only if you have over a thousand, only if you have over a thousand uh, subscribers, which I do not. Uh, my personal one has like 170, and the Gonza Rising one has three. I just started it a couple of days ago. No one's heard of it, and it's got nothing on it. Um, but it's there, uh, and I'm going to start using it to uh, upload clips from the shows. Uh, what else am I doing? I'm I'm writing. I've, I've written a lot of good stuff since coming to Utah. Um, I'm going to be seeking uh, representation with a, a literary agent in April. There's a, a pitch event that um, hopefully it should still be happening because it's online. Um, and I had pretty good luck with that once before. Uh, and those are the main things in my life right now. Jake, my snail, haunting. Uh, Gonzo Rising and Associated Shows, uh, Dreamscapes, and the Utah Arts Alliance, and writing. Not necessarily in that order. Uh, Utah Arts Alliance, by the way, is awesome. Uh, they've, um, they were smart enough uh, to plan ahead for emergencies. And so even though they're a small nonprofit in the arts, uh, they've been able to keep us employed uh, during this downtime. Uh, and uh, it's not a lot, but it's enough to uh, keep the, the front of the stomach from the spine, as it were. Um, uh, and that's, that's just great. And I don't know how long that can last. Um, if it is two weeks to 10 days or something like that, then we'll be fine, but I think it'll be longer. Um, if it's two months, I'm not sure. If it's two months, I'm gonna go nuts, but um, my therapist has canceled, so uh, I don't have quite the resources I, I have grown accustomed to having, uh, but I've spent the last year or more acquiring some really helpful tools that are uh, proving themselves useful in getting through this. Um, I shudder to think how I would be if this had happened two years ago or three years ago. Probably I, it would be dangerous. And just as it's dangerous for, for some people, um, people whose, whose mental health, uh, is at all fragile, having the universe sort of uh, confirm their, their negative outlook uh, can be re really dangerous. Um, so I'm glad I'm where I'm at. Uh, I'm not in any particular danger uh, in that realm, but if anyone is, uh, I'm someone who knows what it's like, and you are welcome to talk to me. Um, if I'm having a particularly bad moment, it might take me a couple hours to get back to you, but for the most part, I'm pretty good about talking and listening. And um, honestly, uh, a bit of advice I've heard, and I'm gonna pass it on, um, don't necessarily take it at 100%, but it's something that, um, makes sense with what I've seen and experienced. Um, if you are feeling suicidal, we used to say call 911. If you're having, you know, uh, an episode of some sort and you don't have any other support around you. Um, and if you're desperate and have nothing else, you might still want to do that. But what increasingly is happening is if you call 911 with a mental health issue, they will send the cops and not an ambulance. And the cops may not respond in a helpful fashion. 
And if you're feeling bad, having armed police show up at your door isn't necessarily going to make you feel less anxious. Um, if you're already, I mean, if you're in the middle of an attempt, then definitely call 911. They'll send an ambulance. Um, there are lots of resources out there and, and I, I don't have them right at my fingertips. Um, but you know, you don't have to Google for more than a few seconds to find there, there's a, there's a hotline that you can, uh, uh, do a, a text chat with if you're uncomfortable using the phone. Uh, I imagine they're pretty busy right now and I imagine their volunteers are, are heroes. Um, they are human. I called one once and um, wasn't particularly impressed with the response. It was largely cheer up, think of nice things. Um, but I didn't give them a lot to work with. <laughs> They're human. Um, but honestly, it worked for me because I was so annoyed. It kind of kicked me out of the mood. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, I seem to have circled back to people who are having a hard time and what they're doing about it. Uh, let's pretend that was my plan all along and this was a well-crafted monologue. Uh, oh, Erica, you asked about my setup. Um, this is not a laptop. It's my... Uh, my other videos are, are on my phone. Um, but the, this one and the previous one... Um, it's on my, my desktop machine. I think when I swung the camera around, you may have caught sight of the, the mic. It's fancy. It's real fancy. Um, I obviously can't show you the camera. Um, uh, no, I'm, I'm not going to use my phone camera to show you the case. Yes, yeah, I am. Uh, uh, the, the camera I'm borrowing from Sasha, who's just up the up the hallway is my roommate and whatever the intermediate is between a landlord and a tenant. And there's the, um, that's not a very good image, is it? But that's the camera. That's not what I'm, I'm dumb. <laughs> that, I'm not going to, there we go. That, that tiny little thing, that little rectangle there, this is the camera. Um, it's, I don't even know. It's, I think it's a Microsoft product. Bougie. Are you referring to my microphone? Probably. Um, you also caught sight of my painting if you're watching. Um, I've done two paintings during this time. Aw, oh, and and this, this sort, of, sort of moonscape. Um, those are kind of the two kinds of things I do. I do slightly desolate landscapes and cartoony stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, and, and I also have uh, an app called, uh, what's it called? Hang on, I will look it up. Voice meter, M-E-E-T-E-R, voice meter. Uh, because my microphone is, um, for some reason, even with everything cranked to 100, it, it, it's quiet. Um, if you like, take a recording and, and, and boost it, it's good quality, uh, but it, it's quiet. Uh, and so I got something that's sort of a graphic equalizer um, to help with that. And I think that's it. Um, I was kind of hoping some of you would reply, but the, the whole uh, delay is... is um, it gets in the way, and, and you may already have signed off by the time I start talking about you. 43 minutes ago. Jesus. Hi from a car in Idaho. What are you doing in Idaho? Um, the, uh, the Mermaids of the Great Salt Lake is, is, uh, is who just waved. Um, cool. They are among my they're they're among my favorite clubs. Club? Are you a club? Are you an organization? Are you a gang? Tell me later, because I'm signing off now. Good night. Um, I will post this and um, I'll also upload it to YouTube for future viewing. 
Mermaid Crafting. Oh, Ashley, hi. I'm sorry you logged in just as I'm about to sign off. Um, but you probably won't know uh, I've signed off until about a minute after I push the button, because there's a long lag. Anyway, love you all, individually and collectively. We'll do this again.